All right, it's 3.01. Hi, I'm Pam Hemingway. I am the needle teacher. I am the only needle teacher. Tammy has given me every right to every needle question there is. So if you have a question, bring it to me. I will do one-on-one -on -one with anybody. Um, I guess that's it. Homework is to make at least two butterflies. Okay. Now to start, we're going back to very beginning basics. I'm putting this in a bucket down here just so I don't have to handle my thread. The, the way to do it is you wrap your fingers. Now see, I always, if you wrap your finger this way, you put your thread on. In my, I'm out of screen. No, I'm in screen. Okay, wrap your finger this way. And then you catch this thread. What you're doing is turning your knot this way. That's your first half of the DS. The second half is you wrap your finger going the other way. Now you can catch it this way. Or you can fold your finger and catch it that way. But you want the other side. And that's your first DS, double stitch. Now, let me show you this one. Back when I was doing cables in for a factory I worked at, how did we do that? Okay, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, okay. I don't know, it ain't working anyway. Okay, so this is the first. Now I hold it over my thumb. I usually wrap my hand because I can't hold it with my little finger like some people do. It just don't work. Tomorrow I get my nails done. Can you tell? Okay. And then I wrap my thumb. And then I pick it up from this side. I make an X with the thread on top and pull it down. Then I make this one an X with that thread on top, but pull from the bottom and pull it down. Again, from the top, pull down. From the bottom, pull down. Oh, Christmas, I forgot the pattern. I got to go get it. Okay, I'm going to start all over again. To do it, you wrap your needle. I got to wrap my hand. You wrap your needle this way. You make a cross. And then you see the cross? And then you want to stab it. What you want is your thread to come out on the inside. Then the second side is you wrap it around your finger, going the other way, and you pick from underneath and in between. So you're making that bar over the front of your two stitches. Can you see that, the little bow? I'm using darker thread so you can see on white paper. Well, I can even see on me. Okay, that's how you do the double stitch. I got to take that off because I didn't save any to use my tail. I need a little bit of a tail space. So you go in this way. You wrap your finger, you wrap your finger this way, over the top, under the bottom, and you grab from the top and through the middle. And the other way is over the bottom, and bottom first, then the top, and you grab the bottom thread. There's your double stitch. Okay. I wrap my hand because my hand cannot hold, I cannot hold the thread. So I use string basics, <laughs> let it run everywhere. And there's one and there's the second half. That makes two. 
I wrap my thumb, again, it's the same thing as wrapping my finger and catching that. Can you see that? Get back in the screen. One, and then I wrap my finger and catch it from the top, two. I wrap my, well, let's just do it the way everybody else does it. They don't need to know my handicaps. Okay, you wrap your finger over the top and under the bottom, and you take it from the top. You wrap your finger again over the top, under the bottom, and you take it from the bottom. So it's really a top and bottom thing. Over the top, under the bottom, and you take it from the top. Over the top, under the bottom, and you take it from the bottom. Even I didn't catch that part. Okay. Over the top. I just got to make sure I'm in screen. Let me get to the paper to where it's out of the way. Actually, let me get another piece of paper. We're doing 10 to start with. Let me put that away for now. Can you see? No, the paper was better. Okay. Wrap the finger. Somebody needs to clean her fingernails. Over the top, out from the bottom, you take it from the top. Wrap your finger again. Over the top, out from the bottom, and you take it from the bottom. Over the top, under. This is awkward for me because this ain't the way I normally do it. Now I don't know how many I got. Two, four, six, eight. And it calls for ten. Over the top, out from the bottom, and take from the top. Over the top, out from the bottom, take from the bottom. Is that clear? Is anybody getting that? Oh, the 13, so they're all back. Okay, that's 10. Then it says leave a pico, which is just a space between the next stitch, over the top, under the bottom. And I use my thumb. A lot less finger movement for me. I don't know why. I forgot how many I got to do this time. So I got to look at the pattern. Oh, one. <laughs> Okay, take it back off. Okay, take two off. Okay. I did a pico and one. And it says three of them. And then a pico again and one. Done. Uh, I want a bigger pico. I don't like a little pico. I want a bigger pico. So, bigger space. And one. Yep, that's a bigger pico. And now another little pico. It doesn't, your pattern doesn't say that. But that's just what I want. Again, I'm an opinionated old woman and it is what it is. <laughs> I do what I want to do. Okay, I did the three picos, and now it's seven. But we just did one after the last pico, so now it's six more. <clears throat> one, two, three. Over the top, from the bottom. From the top, from the bottom. Now, see, I can't talk and count to five. One. I 
Is that slow enough, Hala? Are you still back? Are you back? Sorry about that back. I don't think Kayla made it back. She's melting chocolate. I'm going to her house. That's it. It says for, it calls for another Pico. Can you see that? Another Pico. Another Pico. And then three more. One. This is a, a connecting Pico. See, if you read your, your chart part, it shows you you did ten. One, one, and then seven, and then you got a Pico connecting in three. So that's too big. I don't want that big of a Pico. I want a very small Pico because I don't want it to be sticking out, and I don't want the rings to be spread apart and everything else. So I want a very small Pico, and for that, I do this. I go very small. See that little space? You almost can't even see it. Matter of fact, sometimes you can't see it. One, two, three. Now, this is a self-closing mock ring. For anybody who don't know, SCMR. You pull it through. And I got my tail too short. I'm not used to working with short tails, but Oh, well, I better get used to it. And then you close it and you put it through. You put it through that loop at the bottom. And then before you close it up, you just make sure all your stitches are good. And then you pinch it and pull. Now, this is 10 threads, so I can pull. Tie it. And move on. One done. Okay. Now we're going to do the next one. So you put your needle right up next to where you're going to, where you need your new stitch, right where your old stitch ended. I guess that would work. Over, under, over, under, over. Under. And now you pick up <clears> through <throat> your pico. Because it's a very small pico, I'm using my hook because I don't want to stretch it out by trying to fish through it with my needle. So it's just as easy to use my hook. Am I in screen? Yes, I'm in screen. Wow, that's a good thought. And then I just pull it tight. Now that's my three stitches and my pickup my three stitches and the pickup. Now it says four. Do four here because you did three there and you, yeah, it only wants 14 on this one. So now it's four more. <laughs> Trying to figure out which way to go with my hands is funny. <laughs> one, <laughs> two, <laughs> See, I keep wanting to do it the other way. Three, four. No, that's a wrong count. Hello, I don't know what count it is. All right. That's three in the pickup, and that's three more. Okay. One more. Okay, it says another Pico. So, I want that a good size one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. See my stitches are all on there? It's supposed to adjust. It's supposed to be a self-focusing. But it's focusing on the paper, not on the stitches. 
Okay, that's good. This is one of those things I learned way back. I don't know who it was that taught me, but somebody had said to read my stitches. Well, I read my stitches as this. Here's the caps. Here's the needle. When I pull these off, they're going to curve where the needle was, not where the caps are. So if I want my curve to go the other way, then I would have to be doing it this way so that the curve would be on the inside. Until you pull it closed, you can do anything. But it's easy to do it right the first time. My logic, my way, that's the way it is. Not trying to be rude, but we have to change every pattern to fit us anyway. So this way, might as well make it work and look good doing it. Okay, ring number two done. And again, tie it. Now I only tie like that when I have one color. If I have more than one color, I don't like tying because I don't like blips of color everywhere. Now, Kay had a great blipless join that is now uh, pretty much going viral. One, two, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. When I, whoops, I missed the under. When I first learned to do this, I would count 1A, 1B, 1, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. That way there I knew what I was doing. And then they messed it up on me. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Two, four, five. Over, under, over, under. Now that should be seven. Two, four, I can't see. Two, four, six, seven. Can you see my seven? Need to block what they're viewing on. The seven stitches. Okay. Now it gives for a pico. And again, I want it to be a good size one. And then, uh, guess what I just did? I did it backwards. Hello. Over, under. Over, under. I got to do this four times. Over, under. Over, under is four. And then it says a little pico because it's going to be the connecting one. So I want a little bit of a space and the start of the next stitch. Under, one, over, under. Over, under. That's three. And I close that ring. Butterflies are a good way to empty off a shuttle if you're doing one. Or with little pieces of thread. You can do them with maybe a yard of thread if you have it. You know, I haven't measured, but it shouldn't take that much. Okay, now I tied, and now we're going to do the top ring, which is three, one, over, under, over. Now, let me move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Over, under, over. Under. There's three. Hi, Haler. I'm glad you made it back. 
Did you finish that chocolate yet? I want some. I know, by the time it got to me, it'd be moldy. Maybe I'll just go out and get some on my own. Okay, I connected it with my crochet hook because I didn't want to be fishing through with my needle and stretch that way out. Because if you're fishing with the needle and trying to get it through, it's just easy to use the hook. Okay, so I got the three. Now I got to do seven. Over. Under. Over. Under. Am I in screen or out of screen? In screen. Okay, finally. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. Oh, I don't know how many you got. Five. Six. Seven A. Seven B. Okay, now I'm doing the Picos. See the thing on the Picos? The ones, the three ones, like the other side. <clears throat> so, I want a small Pico. And one, a bigger Pico, two, and a small Pico, three. Can you see that? That's not what it calls for. That's just what I like. <clears throat> I like the middle one to be standing up higher than the other two. I don't know why. There's something wrong with my logic. Maybe. Who knows? And now it says 10 more, but I just did one here at the end. So now we're going to do 10 more, nine more. One, two, one, two. That's four. Nope, that's three. See the three? Okay. It's three. Over, under, four. Over, under, five. Over, under, six. Over, under, seven. Over, under, eight. Over, under, nine. Over, under, ten. Let me make sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. And I can close it. Oh, might be helpful if I check to make sure my needle's threaded first. And it's not going to thread nice. Okay, figures. Normally I'd just lick it and keep going until I got it through there. Because I'm... Okay, now that's through. Okay, yep, that's where I'm supposed to be. Push it through. And I got to finger tap this because my thread's too short to work with. Over and out. Now, my stitches are good. They're in the right direction. Yank. Okay. Now, with needle tatting, both your threads are on the same side. With shuttle tatting, it's the opposite. One is over here. Because when they start, they've got that, that first ring and there's one over there. <clears throat> they work all with one thread. We work with two. Okay. So... What I do is this. I take and re-thread this needle again. Boy, is that getting fuzzy at the end. Okay. And I'm going to sew it in. 
try not to unthread my needle. Okay. Now I've got two threads coming from each side. My thing is I want to sew it up a couple more rows because I want the head to be like up here. Can you see where I'm aiming? No, you can't. Okay. If I tie the head down here, no one's going to see it. I want it up here. So I'm going to do a couple more ties, but I'm going to catch this one in with it. I'm going under that, under the, so the ball thread and through. And I'm going to do a couple more up. Can you see where I'm going here? And just doing it up a little bit. Where it's all the same color, it really doesn't matter. It really makes it easier. I'm doing another one. I want it up in the middle. Now I unthread it again. Okay. Here I go again. <laughs> hey, this is the the um tool of the trade. No, it's the um perils of needle tatting. <laughs> Get used to it. You're gonna be doing it a lot. I, I can't think of the word I want to say. Uh, price of the job. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this one's it. Uh, it's the last one I'm going to do there. Okay. The other one comes through. Okay. Now I'm going to tap the head. It does change it a little bit, but I had another idea for roll tatting up the middle. But that's another can of worms. Okay. Now I'm going to do the head. And the head was, she said, fold rings A and B on top of the, well, I don't know. She said, fold them. To make them go the same. But I don't need to because they're where I need them anyway. No, actually it's coming out of the side. Okay, let me do this then. I treat tatting. I know it's probably wrong. But I treat tatting like, like a recipe. Rather than a written law. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. If I don't like something, I ain't doing it. I mean, I'll teach it. But I don't like some things. I have decided I don't want certain things and I don't do certain things with it. I won't do a split ring at the end of the thing if I get something else to do. I just pulled that through so that it's coming out of the other side now. Now, I'm going to do the... the the knot. It is a square knot. Over and through. And pull down. Now see how that's... No, you can't see. See how this one's coming in and this one's coming out? Just the opposite on the next road. All right. So let's do that. I'll show you it, and then I'll tighten it down. See how it makes a U on this side, and there's a U on the bottom side? Well, when you pull that tight, it locks against itself for some reason. Maybe because you made it that way, but it does lock against itself. And this thing is so little, I can't keep it still. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to pull and yank. Now he's got a head. See that head? I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can't see it.
It's focusing on everything but what I want it to. Here's the head. It's up a little bit. Okay. It should be tighter, but it ain't. And I'm going to make it tighter. I'm not happy. And if Pam's not happy, nobody's happy. Just letting you know. That's the facts. I want it tighter. So open it and tighten it. Okay, I did. Now, it says to tie a knot in the threads for antennas. If you want to do Josephine rings, I take my needle backwards. And I do it this way. And then I just tat over it. I'm doing the second half on this one. One. Two. The second half of the stitch, which would be the over, under. No. Oh, yeah. This one. But it gets small after a while. One. I forgot how many stitches I've got. Yeah, oh boy. And like I said, I just had over it with my needle upside down. Okay. I should count to make them even. Two, four. Okay, I'm too lazy to count all that. Let me do it over. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, this is funny, too. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And I turn it once. I usually do about 25, but I could probably get five more on there. Well, maybe not. Okay, so ten. Ten it is. And then I take and thread the needle again. Give me my threader. I lost a baby. Okay. This one's going to have short antenna. Ta da! But it turns and it makes it an antenna. And then this one I do the front half, which is the other one. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Somebody give me longer thread. Seven, <laughs> eight. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is funny. Ten. <laughs> Whew, that was work. Now, I did the first, second half on this one so that it would curve in, and I did this one so it would curve out. I don't know which one should be right or which one should be wrong, but that's the way I do it. One way, one way, one side, one side. Okay, now I'm going to stutter. Um, I do one side with the first half and the second side with the second half. Okay. And now I got a butterfly. I'll hide those ends in a minute. What do you think?
downside. Bye, Teresa. Thank you. Any questions? Good. Glad you liked it, Robin. I like the antenna a little bit stronger than a piece of string. And if you're going to do the piece of string, leave tails long. So if you're going to sew it down on something, you can use that tail to sew it in, and it will not where the knot is, and it will keep the, the antenna where you want them. You know, like, I don't I can't show you off the bat. Yeah, I can. I'll just do a fakey one. I am sorry about the snafu with this internet of mine, but what can I do? It keeps going out on me. I probably need a new internet company. All right, now I'm going to add a fake te a fake one here. All right, so I got the antenna in. Just pretend those aren't even there. Uh, and you put the knot in. I don't want to add a knot. But when you leave, you've got your knots in, and they're about here, and then you want to sew it to something, just stab through, and then you've got this extra thread to sew it with. And then you can go back and catch it. I hope that helped. Now i got to hide these ends, and I just sew them down, you know, both go in the same direction, well, opposite directions. I got to thread a needle for that. At this point, I don't know. I might even use glue. Okay. Mine came out wonky because I joined into the wrong pico. Okay. You make another one, Joanne. You can make a hundred of these things and just leave them when you go places. Now, I'm going for my tatting list, my nails tomorrow. I'm getting the same color every week. I've had it for two years and I love it still. And each one of them got a butterfly last time. I bought some pins to make them pins, but I haven't done them yet. I've just been busy with things going on. And um, I don't know what I'm going to give them tomorrow, but I'm going to think of something. I got two mug rugs done. I could do them. But every time I go, I seem to give them something. One time I gave him a snowflake back at Christmas time or before Christmas time. I think it was in, in November. And um, they still have them hanging. <laughs> they don't put them away. So what are you going to do? So I this last time was a butterfly. Maybe nothing this time because I'm not prepared. I don't think I have anything ready. I got one tulip I could do. Hmm. I have to think outside the box on that one. I'll think of something. But anyways, that's my little butterfly collection. And I think we're done. Any questions before I end this? Yeah, me too, Hela. Me too. No questions? <laughs> Haley, you know I love you. I wouldn't even be tatting if it wasn't for you. You and Tammy and Barbara. All of you. Hey, no Willow today. Oh no, today's not Friday. She can't make on Tuesdays. My girlfriend makes peanut butter balls. I don't know how she does that either. Okay, no questions? No questions? Needle tatting is, is different than shuttle tatting, but some things are so much easier in needle and some things are just not. 
If you got to do split rings, I swear, learn how to do them with shuttle. Then again, I I made up my own way to do split rings. It is different. All right. I guess that's all. I don't hear any questions coming in. Yeah, my internet is not very good out here. I live up on a hill, hence the name Hilltop Tatter. And sometimes I get hill internet and sometimes I don't. Depends on which way the wind's blowing. And I am so sorry for all that mess. Two weeks in a row on Tuesday, it goes out on me. Maybe that's what happened last week. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing. Okay. I guess that's all, folks. If you have any questions, you can reach me. You can reach me through the online tatting class. Just put Pam in the subject line. <laughs> that means it's me. I'm the only Pam teacher. There's only four of us. Tammy, me, Kay, and Sue. Okay. Other than that, any questions, you can get to me there. Any one-on-ones, I will email or talk to you through email. That way there, it doesn't have to be public if you don't want to know. Or you don't want to share it, whatever. Um, I give up. I'm done. Have a great day. Thanks for showing up. Sorry about this mess up. And until next week. Later. Bye.